Greetings and welcome to B1 Love LLC Spirituality in a Modern World. While everybody's up doing their uh, panic buying, what happens is that psychologically, because I told my doctor years ago, the world is 98% psychosomatic and 2% DNA gene. DNA genes is where you bring whatever ailment, sickness, disease that from your past life into this life. So club foot, I mean, you know, liver problems, all this kind of jazz. So while everybody's doing a panic buying, I then buy, let's see, I think you get 12 mason jars at a time. That would be like a case. So I got like five of those. So then I take um, the immune boost tea, cold and flu tea, and soothe me tea. So then I had took each and every single one of these ingredients and I buy poundage. So I bought a pound of this and a pound of that. So I went on Amazon and bought the poundage. And then this is the list that's in all of those herbs. So then I put them all together and they're all in powder form. So then I can make my teas. So then this way, if I ever get sick, I already have that there. So you put your herbs with your dried vegetables, put it together and you put water and you have a meal. So while everybody's doing panic buying, boom, you've caused a psychosomatic detriment in your mind, body, emotion, spirit. All right detrimental to your mind because your mind is now in the fight or flight mechanism of the reptilian state of being eat or be eaten fight or flight so everyone is going to stress stress creates a chemical imbalance in your mind your body your emotion your spirit so in order to keep the stress down you must think logically by thinking logically, you are going to have a systematic way of doing something so that you yourself do not get sick. What is the point and the purpose of having all of this stuff stored up if you have no health? You have no health, you become a weakling. Then you get sick and then whoo, either you can die or it gets better. You then choose. Do you find that stress is inevitable or do you find that you have a pattern of systematic ways of doing things with the rational mind so i have all of these herbs while well, everybody's panic buying this and that i always have worked with a lot of herbs over the years so they're in mason jars and they're you know i live in an rv so they're on a little uh shelf i got from uh where is it lowe's yeah lowe's and uh, just put it together and boom. Then each one is like a quart. Um, you know, you can have a, a gallon size, a quart size, all these different sizes. And uh, so it's over there. So I mixed all of those together. And then I ended up having all of that powder. And that powder is then goes into making my teeth. So as the days go by... I find that being a very creative person, there are certain things you must do in life. You must uh, recycle. So while I'm out mowing these acreages, like one school has 22 acres and I have 22 schools. So there's a lot of acreage to mow. So I collect feathers and I collect the plastic bottles and cans that people throw away. I tell my neighbors and co-workers and everybody, bring me some of your, bring me your cans, bring me your plastic bottles. I recycle them. I put the recycles inside uh, my HSA, health savings account, in my um, credit unit. So it gets 75% APY. APY is annual percentage yield. So whatever money I get from the recycles goes in my HSA and it's about 60 bucks a month. I mean, 60 bucks a year and make that a 75 times 75% is, there you go, 
and then that's how much interest I'm earning on that 60 bucks. And these are things that I find and, you know, co-workers and everybody are giving me. I also collect feathers from, there's a lot of birds around, like eagles and this sort of nature thing. So I got a really big one. Look at this bad boy. Isn't that huge? Okay, so we got hawks and eagles and all kinds of birds. And, and this one looks like a zebra. Isn't that awesome? So I collect these and then I'm going to make uh, scrolls with them. And I'm going to put them in acrylic, making the molds, make acrylics. And so that I'm going to have uh, book markers and whatnot. So it's going to be acrylic and plastic. And so, of course, they've been cleansed. And they have been blessed so that um, the blessings will help illuminate um, the goodness in a person's heart. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But of course, that's only one of 50 projects I'm in the middle of process of doing. <laughs> this right here is a green styrofoam and it holds water. Uh, this is what florists use. So I used to use these in some of my projects. These are great also if you want to put your, um, uh, shoot, what do you call it? Your incense sticks. If you want to put your insects, incense sticks in there, just like that, and you light it, and the ashes will drop off. So these are really good, uh, handy thing to have these, uh, Locks of styrofoam. And if you bring any plants from the florist, fresh plants, well, then you put this inside your vase, your vase, with water. And it will uh, keep the water in there for a little longer for your plant. So I'm looking forward to doing this project. And lucky me, I uh, haven't been feeling so good in the last few days. I think it's due to exhaustion. My mother always told me when I was younger, you need to slow down, you're gonna make yourself sick. Cause I always work myself to the point of exhaustion and then I get sick. So I've been sick for a couple of days and uh, my friend I took to the store on Saturday, she called me up today and she says that she got COVID on Monday. She think it was from the store we went to. I was like, really? I've been going through cancer treatments and seeing hundreds of people at the hospital for the last two years. And I'll still be going for the next three years because you're going to go five years after cancer is gone. Yay, it's a rule. Um, now, I have the, a chance to catch it. Seriously, I don't need this. I don't have time to be sick. I have too much to do, so... I'm going to go tomorrow and get a COVID test, and I've only had like 18, because you always have to have a COVID test two days before you go see your doctor, because they're all like paranoid, you know. So look at this one. Isn't this pretty? Just imagine, you got a leopard print, or a zebra? No, it's a leopard print uh, feather. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, look at those. Aren't those gorgeous? Wow, who knew, right? And then you got some pure black. Okay, now, the story goes that when I was five, I saw my first spirit guide, and uh, he was in the ceiling. It was an old Indian man with one feather. So from time to time throughout life, I will be walking somewhere or, or whatever I'm doing, and I'll look down, and there's a feather. Now, each feather has a different color. And it is a sign for to tell me good and bad people's coming. So then I'm always on the lookout that I see the feather and then I look up and all of a sudden somebody walks by. So it's telling me if they're a good or a bad person. But these are signs from my spirit guide. Um, I never really did know his name. Never really thought about it. I just remember it was an old Indian man. Did you hear that pop? It happens sometimes when the heat expands and contracts. And yeah, it's still kind of like summer when it's going to be like between 85 and 90 today in the desert. 
So that pop was just the fact of heat expanding. So it expands plastic and whatnot. So they make noise. So when I said I never thought about asking his name. And then all of a sudden, pop. Yeah, okay, it was another shine. Or it could be, it is uh, the expansion and contraction of heat and cold. So you can rationalize it. Or you can go into the creative part of the brain and say that was a sign from that spirit guide telling me I should have asked his name, I suppose. So I'm looking forward to doing those. It's going to be absolutely interesting because on the background of the feathers are also going to be, I collect eucalyptus leaves that fall from the uke trees at the schools. And then, of course, you cleanse them. And then you can use them for uh, clearing your sinus. You just break them up and the oil is going to the water and it's heated. So then you're going to like steam your face and whatnot. So it's all very uh, natural. And um, the oils must be broken. You can't just put that uh, uh, leaf into the water and expect it to do its thing. That's not going to happen. You have to put that leaf into the... Um, Put that leaf into the water and you have to break it up. It's so interesting sometimes the way these uh, feathers uh, show. It blows my mind. Um, and birds are extremely intelligent. When I'm mowing and I get to the end of the lane, and I turn around and come back. There's got to be at least 50 birds there. They were eye hawking me from miles and miles away. Because the minute I pass, all the bugs that are in the grass, they're just like up on it in two seconds. And they're chowing down. So, <laughs> they have really impeccable eyeballs. And I hope someday... My eyeballs get that good. Because I think out of all the animals in the world. I would like to be a bird in my next life. Simply because you don't need a passport. You don't need a travel plans. You can just go wherever you want. And there's no big deal. Nobody's saying take these tests. Make sure your driver license is correct. And all this yada yada yada. Hargy malarkey crap. So that you can travel. How about my next life? I am then an eagle. Or a hawk. I wouldn't want to be a buzzard. Because buzzards like eat dead stuff. And I am vegan. So I don't eat dead stuff anyway. So that would be disgusting. But I think it would be really cool. To be a bird in my next life. They say that before you pass. You must really think about. What do you want to look like in your next life? Who do you want to be in your next life? Well, of course, I love me. I want to be me in my next life. I, I look fantastic. I want to look like me in my next life. I love my personality. I want to keep my personality. So I want to be exactly who I am in my next life. But more knowing at a higher level. Because then as Gemini, the goal is to conquer the mind. Life is love. Love is life. Blessing from Reverend Lewis. Thank you for your support.